We will now have the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. Let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expired, Jesus, Jesus but, but the source of life gushed forth for, for souls, souls, and the oceans of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fountain of life, unfathomable Divine Mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Oh, oh, oh. 
sorrowful passion.
Submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord is the refuge and strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, as we step into the twelfth Sunday of the year, and as we celebrate today the gift of fathers in our life, let us prepare our hearts and minds in this celebration of thanksgiving for all the blessings the Lord has showered upon us, for the abundance of God's grace showered in our lives. And so with humility and in a contrite heart, let us examine ourselves. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord, Lord God, Lamb, Lamb of God, Son, Son of the, the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive us of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. From the heart of tempest, the Lord gave Job his answer. He said, Who bent up the sea behind closed doors when it leapt tumultuous out of the womb, when I wrapped it in a robe of mist and made black clouds its swaddling bands, when I marked the bounds it was not to cross, and made it fast with a bolted gate. Come thus far, I said, and no further. Here your proud waves shall break. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Some sail to the sea in ships to trade on the mighty waters. These men have seen the Lord's deeds, the wonders he does in the deep. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. For he spoke, he summoned the gale, tossing the waves of the sea up to heaven and back into the deep. Their soul melted away in their distress. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. All the waves of the sea were hushed. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. They rejoiced because of the calm, and he led them to the haven they desired. Let them thank the Lord for his love, the wonders he does for men. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The love of Christ overwhelms us when we reflect that if one man has died for all, then all men should be dead. And the reason he died for all was so that living men should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised to life for them. From now onwards, therefore, we do not judge anyone by the standards of the flesh. Even if we, if we did once know Christ in the flesh, that is not how we know him now. And for anyone who is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old creation has gone, and now the new one is here. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 
Hallelujah. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. With the coming of evening, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him just as he was in the boat and there were other boats with him then it began to blow a gale and the waves were breaking into the boat so that it was almost swamped but he was in the stern his head on the cushion asleep they woke him and said to him master do you not care we are going down and he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea Quiet now, be calm. And the wind dropped, and all was calm again. Then he said to them, Why are you so frightened? How is it that you have no faith? They were filled with awe and said to one another, Who can this be? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's, it's another beautiful weekend. It's Father's Day. And it's a day we sit back and enjoy the blessings God has showered upon us. Today I'm going to invite you to go on a boat ride, a simple boat ride, just to, to be with the apostles on this journey. Jesus has just completed his teaching. Last week we heard about the parables of the kingdom, the seed, the grace, planted, sprout, grew, began the biggest shrub. And after this whole experience, Jesus took them on a boat ride. What is interesting about this narrative and this passage that unfolds before us this morning is the storm, storms of life. We all have it. To some of us, it, it just doesn't rain, it pours. To some of us, it's, it's a storm. It comes, as I said, many times in different shapes, in different moments, in different colors and it hits us and everything collapses at some point in our lives at the end of the rope and we struggle with it the storms of life I find that storms storms of life is sometime a learning curve in our lives it's a learning touchstone experience because sometimes storms actually exposes our true selves Storms helps us to learn quite a bit about our true self and false self in regards to our faith in the person of Jesus. It exposes our weakness, our vulnerability of who we are when we stand before God. And today, the whole theme of today's gospel is crossing to the other side. Crossing over to the other side. 
I spoke a bit about this during my sharing on the wall of mercy, mercy in the time of pandemic, in, in relation to the sharing of Holy Father Pope Francis in the midst of this pandemic, how we move from one state to another state. And this crossing of the other side is something that exposes where we are in the boat of our life. This boat could be your marriage, it could be your family life, it could be your career, it could be the church, it could be the community. I'm just going to invite you this morning to walk with me, but most importantly to sit on that boat and allow us to sail through this journey as we cross over to the other side. Because life is always a movement from one period, from one state, to another. It's always a movement from one juncture of life to another. Because very often we find ourselves in crossroads and T-junctions, making the needed choices and decisions. And sometimes the storms just hits us and we collapse. And we collapse. As I invite you to walk with me or sail with me on this beautiful journey. Something happened on that boat in that storm. And when I looked and re-looked at that text, at that narrative and that beautiful passage, I found myself sitting with four questions. There were four questions in the gospel text today. Just like Job in the first reading in the storm of his life. There were four questions that transpired. There were four questions that unfolded in the gospel. And as we step into these questions, I just invite you again and again to open your hearts and your minds to allow Jesus, the Spirit, to touch the corners of your life today as you to allow these questions to touch the very fiber of your being today of your faith experience. The first question is that Jesus was on the boat. The gospel text tells us that the disciples took Jesus into the boat. They took Jesus into the boat, simply meaning they invited Jesus to join them on this journey, on this ride. That's how we do it every day. When we pray, we ask the Lord to be with us. We ask the Lord to guide us during the day. We ask the Lord to accompany us during the day. Very often when we sign the cross and we start the day of our prayer, we're inviting the Lord to be with us. I hear this very often. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. It's about being with the Lord at that moment. That's what the disciples did. They took Jesus into the boat. Simply meaning we took Jesus into our marriage. We took Jesus into our family life. We took Jesus into our career. We took Jesus into our very life. It's a prayer. And they took Jesus. And so they got into the boat. And it was a smooth sailing. As I'm narrating this beautiful story to you, keep in mind, these guys who are on the boat, Peter, James, John, Andrew, they're all fishermen. They know the sea. <laughs> That's their business. They know it very well. And they know the sea. And say so they got into the boat and it began to sail. And all of a sudden, the winds took over them. And it was no, no simple wind. It was a very, very strong wind. Scripture uses the word, a fierce storm took over them. When something hits you and hits you so badly and everything in your life at that moment is collapsing and shattering and you wonder what's happening. Water is filling up the boat and they're at sinking point and they turn to Jesus and they said, Master, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? That's the first question. Teacher, master, do you not care that we are perishing? Sometimes in the midst of your moment of your spiritual life, you find that God is silent. 
when you are collapsing in a moment of anxiety and fear, when everything is at the end of that rope, and you ask yourself, God, why, God, why have you abandoned me? Jesus cried out on the cross, Lord, Lord, why have you abandoned me? There's a moment when we find that God has turned a deaf ear or a silent ear to our plea. I had my share of stories, even as a priest. When you find yourself that God is suddenly so silent, Job, in the first reading, struggled with it. Some of them might end up with what Marxism would say, God is dead. God is dead. That's the first question that we ask ourselves. When fear has taken root in our lives and everything is crippled at that moment and everything is shattering. Teacher, Lord, why are you so silent, Lord? Do you not care that we are perishing? But the irony, the irony of this gospel text is if you and I were on the boat and even if we were asleep and even if we were in deep sleep, no matter what happened, we would have been awakened. Let's be honest to ourselves. And yet Jesus was calmly in the strong wind, strong, fierce storm. He was asleep. And they woke him up. That brings us to the second question. The first question was the disciples throwing this question to Jesus. And the second question was Jesus looking at the eyes of the disciples and telling them, why are you afraid? Why are you terrified? As I say to you, my dear friends, we all have a moment of fear in our lives. Even in this pandemic, it could be the first wave, second wave, or even the third wave that's coming. We are still in a state of fear. When will this end? When will this storm pass by? When we look at our family life and you're wondering at the social or the economic lives that's taking hold in our family, Jesus simply says, why are you afraid? Fear, my dear friends, as I say to you, cripples life. Fear blinds us to many things in life. All of us are filled with anxiety at some point of our lives. And it shatters us. And Jesus says, do not be afraid. As I said, if you look at scriptures, there are 365 times you'll find this word, do not be afraid. And yet we are afraid. What's unfolding in our life? What's going to happen to the parish? What's happening to the project? What's going on? There's a sense of uncertainty. As I said to you in the beginning, storms actually unfolds what we camouflage in life. What is hidden in our lives is made open. Our true self. Why are you afraid? The third question that comes from Jesus is very much related to the second question connected to it. Do you not have faith? Do you still have no faith? Do you still have no faith? I spoke about this at some point, faith and belief. We all believe in God. In a couple of minutes, you are, you are, you are going to just echo with me. I believe in God, I believe in the Holy Spirit, I believe in the Catholic Church, I believe in the communion of saints. We all believe in it. I believe in God, but do you have faith in God? When the moments of life transpires and transcends us into an emotional roller coaster, do we have that faith with God? Do we really have that faith with God? Do we surrender and tell ourselves, Thy will be done, Lord? Do we totally put our hands into the hands of God and say, God, I totally put my heart, life into your hands? Do we have no faith yet? Thomas, blessed are those Thomas who have not seen and yet believe. We will struggle with it. And the last question is the question the disciples asked one another. The disciples threw it to one another. When everything was in a state of calmness, when they have walked past that moment, when they turn back to look at the storm, when they realize it was calmness now, they simply said to this, Who is this man 
even the winds and the waves who is he i am the lord your god i am emmanuel god with us sometimes when life tragedies and life moments have passed by when you and i look back and we wonder how did we ever make it as i said to you in the beginning i could tell you stories of the stories of my own life sail and i look back and i wonder who is this man who has brought me to this journey god who is everything and in everything even the waves obey him even the winds are in his hands there will be a moment my dear friends when we will look back at the storm and there will always be a tinge of smile in us and say god i thank you lord i'm just going to end this morning with a, a little sharing i may have said the story and i just want to re re echo this it's a story about a young girl a very beautiful young girl who was beginning to learn to drive and as she got into the car her father her wonderful dad sat next to her and let's go dear let's begin the journey and as she was beginning this first moment of her life in the car it, st it started to drizzle and she was getting a bit anxious and a bit worried and she says dad maybe we'll do it another day can we just pull over and the father looked at her and smiled and says go ahead sweetheart it's okay just step on it and as she continued this journey it got a bit heavy the drizzle was getting a bit heavy and she was feeling tight and anxious and says that i don't think we can make it let's just pull aside and the father says i'm here just keep going and she went on and went on and then it got heavy it was heavier and she saw a couple of cars pulling aside and she says that could we just pull aside together with the rest and wait for the rain to stop it's it's too, it's heavy that and the father said keep going keep going keep going dear and she kept going and then it was the storms and the lightning as i said to you sometimes it just pours and then there was the 16 wheel trailer who just passed her and pulled to the side and says that i don't think i can continue that i I'm, I'm not going to do it that and the father says just keep going and she went through it and she had that moment of faith and just as she passed through that storms the rain stopped it began to drizzle and then it stopped and the father looked at this beautiful girl and said sweetheart pull aside pull aside now and she pulled up and pulled aside and the father looked at it and says now you get out you get out of the car now and look back she got out of the car and she looked back my dear friends storms storms reveal if we are living what we are learning that's all storms reveal if we are living what we are learning in life you will have it and it will come at any moment and it never ends we will find it but remember the beautiful words of scriptures may the lord who has begun this great work in us will bring it to completion let us continue on that boat knowing that the lord is in the boat he is with us and in the stillness of that silence do not be afraid We stand to renew our faith in God and the Church. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Maker, Maker of, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the, the only begotten Son of God, God born of the Father before all ages, God, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray to our merciful Father, putting our trust and confidence in him, during these difficult times. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and religious, that the Lord will bless them and protect them as they face the challenges of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of our country, that they will put behind their political differences and be united in bringing about all that is good for the people, especially during this time of pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, poor and marginalized, that they will be aided, healed, and comforted through the acts of mercy of those who reach out to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Mother Nature, that we will come together to protect all of God's people and creatures from the impacts of climate change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For every father, grandfather, godfather, and spiritual father, that every one of them seeks Christ and his shepherd and strength to lead their families so that they live exemplary lives just as St. Joseph did. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our own needs and needs of those who have asked for our prayers, we now pray in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings which you pour out upon us. Help us to put our faith, our trust in you, and know that you are in the same boat with us as we go through the storms of life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, Hail guardian, guardian of, of the, the Redeemer. Redeemer. Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 
To you, God, entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Which earth is given in human hands, have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Thanks to your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of our reconciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear friends, as we step into the prayer phase and the Eucharistic prayer, I just invite you to pray for the intentions of this morning's Eucharist and for the intentions that lie in your hearts. We continue to pray for all fathers today, living and deceased. We continue to pray for all those who are in the front line, frontliners, for all those who have been affected by the pandemic, quarantine, isolation, hospitalized, in different stages. We pray for the Lord's comforting and assurance in the storms of life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered far from sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, met the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifested as the Church. And so, Father, in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Faustina and John Paul II, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Father, listen graciously to the prayers of this family and community whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all children scattered throughout the world. To our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. We take a moment to, 
to pray for all our deceased fathers. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As you await the coming of God's kingdom with faith and confidence, we pray in the words Jesus gave us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We take a moment to offer that peace to one another. Peace be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for my sheep, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, Lord, that we may celebrate with constant devotion what we are becoming a pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a couple of important updates uh, in regards to the parish and Father's Day. So I'll just begin with what's highlighted in the parish bulletin. Kindly take note that we have opened the doors, we are still opening the doors for RCIA. Uh, we will begin the first session on the 1st of July. If you know of anyone who is inclined to deepen the faith and to discover God's love, I would really encourage you to invite friends, family members, relatives, whoever that you have come in touch with to be enrolled onto the RCI for this year. It's a journey of not only of self-discovery, but a discovery of who God is in their lives. So please, if you know of anyone, do encourage them. The other informations are in the bulletin, likewise in the website and the Facebook. I'm going to step into the wall of mercy Last week, I spoke about some of the important things that were being revealed in stages, both in the Facebook and in the website. Just an update of what is happening in the Wall of Mercy, having launched our first newsletter. In all honesty, as a parish pastor, a parish priest, I am truly overwhelmed. I have been taken aback by the, the response of so many families who have stepped up, so many BCs who have come forward, we have, we have reached out quite a bit. And today we have, in total, we have collected about 46 packets of food. Food packets, we have rearranged 46 food packets and to three homes. It's been just pouring in, as St. Paul would say, bountifully given. Grace abounds, you know. The, love, the Lord loves a cheerful giver and funds have been pouring in and we have been receiving it. So when you begin to look at all this at the wall of mercy and the food that is being reached out to people, I'm going to invite you, if you have the time, just to step in, to lock in into the virtual wall in your website and have a glimpse, a glance of what is unfolding in the parish so that you and I are part of this mercy wall that we are not just standing outside of the wall, but we are part of the wall. It's part of the parish mission to serve in mercy. So I'm invited to lock in into this virtual wall and have a glimpse of it, of the unfolding and updates of the parish. And if you have been doing quite a bit, please don't hesitate to share your stories. You know, just share your stories so that others who are listening or reading about it may somewhere and somehow be touched by the experience to, to be an instrument, to be a channel of God's love and mercy to others. We are still in the midst of collecting food rationing and any of you be interested to still reach out, please do so. The baskets are there at the Garden of Mercy to collect whatever it is. And if you find it difficult, please get in touch with the Mercy team to the WhatsApp or to the email. And if you know of cases of anyone who's still in need in your neighborhood or someone you have been in contact with, please do reach out to us. Rest assured, as I said, everything is in confidentiality. If you have someone who's struggling in the midst of family life who needs a listening ear, the counseling group is there. If you need someone who needs to be prayed with, to be intercede, please, the intercession groups are there. So please, by all means, we are in the midst of finalizing the Google form to, to reach out to families who are in need of financial aids. So please, uh, once the forms are updated, it will be forwarded to you by your BEC leaders. So if you knew of, know of anyone who is in need of this financial aids, please help us to assist them. 
from the parish. So once again, I thank all those wonderful families, wonderful BEC leaders, wonderful zone leaders, wonderful individuals who have stepped up to make this dream a reality as we move forward on the wall of mercy. Let's continue. Let's continue because as St. Paul would have told us these past days, the more you give, the more you receive. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Okay, it's Father's Day. What do we do? <laughs> I, I promised the fathers on Mother's Day that I, that I will do something spectacular, something more, but the MCO has hit us and we are back into solitary confinement in the silence of the church. Rest assured that a good number of things have been prepared for you this morning. A couple of videos done by the youths and the catechism class kids. It's superb. I, I had a glimpse of it, a view of it. It's beautiful. We'll have a look at it. But before I step into the videos, fathers, wherever you are this morning, I'm just going to invite your family members to gather around you. And I invite you to pray with me this morning the prayer that St. Joseph's prayer for all fathers. And together we pray this prayer together. Bow your heads in blessing, my dear fathers. St. Joseph, Joseph, guardian of Jesus, and chaste husband of Mary, you pass your life in loving fulfillment of duty. You supported the Holy Family of Nazareth with the, with the work of your hands. Kindly protect those who trustingly come to you. You know their aspirations, their hardships, their hopes. They look to you because they know you will understand and protect them. You too knew trial, labor, and weariness. But, but, but amid the worries of material life, your soul was full of deep peace and sang out in true joy, through intimacy with God's Son, and entrusted to you and with Mary, his tender mother. Assure those you protect that they do not labor alone. Teach them to find Jesus near them and to watch over him faithfully as you have done. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear fathers out there, a blessed Holy Father's Day. I invite you now to just view the first video presentation by the Catechism students. God our Father, we give you thanks and praise for all the fathers, young and old. We pray for young fathers, newly embracing their vocation. May they find the courage and perseverance to balance work, family and faith in joy and sacrifice. We pray for fathers around the world whose children are lost or suffering. May they know that the Lord of compassion walk, walks with them in their sorrow. We pray for men who are not fathers but still mentor and guide us with fatherly love and advice. We remember fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers who are no longer with us. But who live forever in our memory and nourish us with their love. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Selamat Hari Bapa. Hello, ini Atan Dier Dinam. Degayan Alonam Manga Tatai. Fu Qing Jie Kuai Le.
I didn't see that part. <laughs> okay. Fathers, it's your day. Enjoy the day with your family and your loved ones. Rest assured that we keep you in our prayers on this beautiful day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. There will be a second video presentation. It's beautiful. That's by the, by the youths. If I don't get a moment, I just want to thank all the catechism kids and the youths for making this remarkable and wonderful and awesome presentation for all fathers. God bless you all. Have a blessed weekend, have a blessed week ahead, and have a blessed celebration of Father's Day. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to you too, Father Michael. Hi, Father Michael. I wish you a very good, happy Father's Day. I love your homilies. Keep them up. God bless you. For me, Father Michael is very good with his sermons and he keeps his cool during Mass. Hi, Hi Father. Father. Happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. You are amazing. You're awesome. Stay safe. Always. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, Hi. Hi, Father. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for helping us to smell the Kingdom of God. Hi, Father Michael. I think you are someone who is really friendly. And even though you just moved to our church a year ago, you have no problem making all of us feel at home, and especially with the youths. And I'm really thankful for that. Father, you are amazing. amazing.